Hello everyone, it's Tanya with Scribbles and Time, and I'm going to do a flip through today of these four journals, um, and I have got to be up front with you, I am just about in tears. I have got to tell this little bitty story, and I promise I will try to go quickly, um, but I, I get up very early, and I got up this morning at 345, which is earlier than normal, and um, just couldn't go back to sleep, so I got on up, got busy, you know, got laundry going, got my husband out the door for work as normal, and decided I'd come back here and film a flip through of these journals that I have finally finished. I started these in November. Um, so I came back here, started the video, and I was almost done. I still, I was almost done flipping through the third journal and was um, still had not started the fourth journal. And my daughter decided to do a surprise visit on her way to work, um, which I love. I love when she does that. It's just um, she inherited my mouth, and so she comes in very loud and singing and not knowing I'm back here filming a video, and I kept thinking, well, she'll stop before she gets back here, but no, she she was very loud and having a great time, and I love it, but um, it, it was not very good for a video, so anyway, it was her being silly, and I love that, but y'all might not, but anyway, it might be getting posted because then she says, mom, please do not post that video with me singing. And I'm like, oh, I would never, but I might have to do it because I came back here to redo the video about an hour ago. It's now probably, I don't know, it's probably noontime and I'm just getting around to trying to refilm it about an hour ago and completely refilmed the video and did not realize my battery had died on my phone and I filmed with my phone. So and y'all, I did the most amazing job on that video. <laughs> Isn't that funny how when a video messes up you, your memory of it, it was that it was the perfect video. But but yeah, I, I filmed a video and I think it probably went pretty good. And anyway, it didn't save. So I now have my charger hooked up and I'm going to try to do this one more time. But the slightest mess up <laughs> and I'm giving up. And my daughter's just going to have to deal with the video getting posted with her singing. So um. Anyway, I have got to tell you real quick before we start actually flipping through these journals what they are. So I am calling these base books. And what I mean by that is I started these books in November. And I don't know if any of you watched the video where I did a flip through of my passport journal. And um, in the video, I said that I had some old leather and I had laid the leather across it and it looked really good. And it did. It, it does look great with leather across it. And so I had my intentions had been after I filmed the video to go back and add leather, you know, as the cover for this. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I actually like it like it is. And so I decided to make another one. So I started on this one here. And then as I started it, I thought, what am I going to do with it? I wasn't putting lace or anything. I was making it as a base book, just like I had done this. So if you watch this video, you know that I had made a base book the size of a passport book. And I tried to even make it look like a passport by using a green file folder. And I made all of the base pages, which you can't hardly see any of the base pages because that's the concept of this kind of book is that you cover all of your base pages with papers. So there's a base page there, and it's completely covered with hinged items, and I've literally attached little signatures on the pages, pockets. Every base page has just stuff and more stuff hinged on, for, you know, going different directions. You'll have to watch this video because I'm not going to spend too much time on this. My point is I made a base book for this and then started adding stuff to it. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to do base books and I made them in my opinion enough so that if someone wanted to leave them just like they are they're they're great just like they are but the thought process was that someone could get these and start adding fold outs and flip outs and tucks and whatnots and just really create it to be a thick bundle of whateverness so that was my thought process with these so I started this one um, first and then decided to do the whole concept of some base books. So then the Eiffel Tower one was the next one I started. This one has a little bit more in it because at that time I thought I was going to be making a fully full, full thing. <laughs> so um, then I decided just to do some base books. 
I don't even know if anyone would be interested in these, and that's fine. Um, I have a local boutique that I'm working on getting my stuff, some of my stuff put into to try to sell, and um, so I don't even know for sure if I'm going to list these in Etsy. In the video that didn't save, I just kind of spontaneously went ahead and talked about the prices and made the decision to not put these in Etsy, but I'm still not real sure what I'm going to do. And I know that people never talk about pricing on these videos, and so it might be a taboo thing to do, but I think it's only fair just in case I don't put these in Etsy and someone's interested. You can comment below if you're interested, and I can figure out a way for us to get together for that. But um, I am going, this one has a little bit more in it. These three are smaller. These are going to be $119 plus shipping for these you know a piece for those this one's going to be 129 plus shipping and i you know this may not even be your style that's fine uh, more than anything um if, if you're not interested create your own i mean they're not hard you can literally make just a base book and then start adding stuff to pages and i think truly that's what a lot of people do anyway with their junk journals um it's just that's not typically my style of what i do typically i tend to make more art you know like an art style book with mixed media paper and that kind of thing but it's really not that far out of what the realm of what all of us do with junk journals anyway we attach stuff to pages so I'm calling these base books and um hope that makes sense it's so hard to put it in words three times <laughs> so um I'm going to start with this one and as I said in the earlier video I really used some complex names for these um this one is called Flower, and um, this is the one that's, um, it has a little bit more in it than these. This one is going to be called Birds, really complex. This one is going to be called Victorian Lady, and this one's going to be called Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so um, that's kind of what they're called, um, and so all of them, like I said, are very similar. They all have leather covers. Um, they're all about the same size. Now it's hard, you know, because stuff pokes out, which phew, that's the whole concept. Um, but they all have a key that hangs over the from the first page to the front and some type of rusty something hanging from the bottom of the cord that the key is on. Um, they all have, you know, vintage doilies on the spine. Um, these three only have one. This one has two vintage doilies. Um, they all have a lot of vintage little trims, um, fabric tags. But um, the whole thing I would, was trying to do in my videos was to do a flip through and kind of give you ideas of what I would do in case someone's interested in one of these and wants to try to build it up to be a book that looks more like this. So that was what I did in the earlier video. I'm just going to try to go pretty quickly um, because, again, they're all pretty much the same. They're just random. Like I say, you can make one of these if you're into making books. They're not hard. Um, the leather is just a really soft old leather. And I tried to leave all of my threads, my strings, because I like the grungy look. I like things being all cattywonker and... I guess I, I don't like to say the word junky, um, but they're junk journals and I like them to be imperfectly perfect. <laughs> I like them to have like messiness about them that creates, a, um, you know, a, a story and interest and dimension and all of that. So that's, this is my style. Um, and I hope you like it, <laughs> but um the fabric I used, you know I'm not good with fabrics. If you watch my other videos, I don't even try to pretend like I am. This is a thick fabric. I'm calling it upholstery fabric. Now, the one with the birds is for sure upholstery fabric. I'll show you that when I get to it. The other three all have this fabric. And then this has like a flower embellishment with some rope and a piece of greenery that I also used back here on one of the books. I thought it was this one. Um, maybe it wasn't this one. They're all blurring together now. It was this one. So yeah, I used the greenery in these two. So this one has it here and that one has it down the edge of a page. 
just trying to stick to the nature thing here and then this beautiful vintage ruffle coming down the side and then when you turn this I've attached paper here with a little piece of thin sheer kind of fabric and the rope that holds the key and the rusty piece is kind of fed behind this to where it slides up and down in case you want the key to hang out longer or you can pull it on down and not have it hang out far at all like that so um, this key actually slides um, I think it slides in one other one and then I think I've stitched them down in the other ones but anyway this is kind of just a piece of paper and I can tell you right now if this were mine and I were trying to make it like this I would now add a small piece of paper here, like a flip, whether it be a, just a, you know, whether it's a book page like that, I'd create a flip there, and then I would create one here, and then here you can do anything from like a miniature signature, we'll pretend like this is a signature, this is a thank you card, with a bunch of pages that I've just stuck in here, but if you made like a little signature, you could then actually hinge it on to this page, so that that creates more thickness like that and then by the time you do that on every page you're going to start getting this look again there might be better ways out there but that's the way I did this one so um, this has vintage trim coming down it every one of these has one of these little tuck spots it's made out of a little piece of um, like cardstock with some collaged like old book pages and stuff on there and then some cellophane over the top and I've left the top open and I used some tweezers and slid a feather down in there each one of them has a feather you can pull the feather out it would probably require tweezers because it's pretty tight in there um, but you can pull the feather out and you know slide a piece of paper <laughs> down in here if you choose to do so my point is this is still a little pocket and I'm not going to get my fingers to work there we go so you can slide paper in here or whatever. Um, and then I've just put a little tag behind there. And then this is a like a little order thing with a vintage stamp. And that's the other thing. Every time you hinge something into these pages, add some type of tab. Um, that's something I plan on doing more of in this. So like, you know, Christmas came up right after I filmed this video, but I kept this in a little wooden tray, you know, kind of stuck aside because I'd taken everything down for... Christmas to come out um, but in my wooden tray I've been throwing stuff that show you some of the stuff I've been throwing stuff in this wooden tray that I wanted to eventually add to this a stick um, just things I want to go back and add as tabs on some of these pages and they'll show from the outside but um, you know a little piece of metal I love that look to have some rusty metal just kind of poking out somewhere so these are just all things you can add. I mean, just weird things that if it's stuff that you like, that's what matters. And like these are some weird looking rocks that I'll just put on a page and do like an X stitch over it and attach it to a page. If I like it, then I will enjoy it. So that's kind of where my mindset is when I'm doing something like this is just start adding stuff you like. But if you everything you add if you put a little tab it adds interest and visual interest and dimension as you're flipping through and i also when i'm doing it i try to look around at the pages around me and see there's a little fabric tab there so i try to look around and correlate whatever you know i'm seeing in colors for what tab i pick out to use um, I did try to just use some little rusty paper clips and attach some stuff to some pages. Um, again, this is a page. I would remove this. If this were mine, I would probably actually add this up here to this one as my flip. Because you would want something kind of small there. And then um, add a big signature or something here as a flip. But um, again, that's just personal preference and um, do what you like. I'd probably put a tab there and whatnot, but that's a crinkly piece of paper. This one has a fabric um, flag here on the bottom of the page. This one has a little rosette um, band fabric on top of tool right here on that page. This is a little scorecard and it has a fabric scribbles in time tab. Um, this is some cardstock that I would attach a flip to. 
and then with a paper clip I've just attached an old postcard it does have a little bit of writing on the back I don't know if you can see that very well I'm not going to take it off um, and then I've tucked an envelope in here I've, I bought a bunch of these envelopes a long time ago when I first started making junk journals and they came to me sealed and I'm pretty sure whoever I bought them from sealed them um, because I opened a bunch of them because some of them you can feel paper inside of and I thought I was fixing to hit the jackpot and so I opened a bunch of them and they're just little blank pieces of paper inside of them so I've quit opening them um, so this one hasn't been opened I can tell you it's probably a little piece of blank paper in there or an index card um, I don't know if all of them has paper in them I think all of them are still sealed um, this is the only one um, that has a vintage handkerchief in it very pretty handkerchief and again this was one I, I thought when I first started making these back then that I was going to do it all the way and so I added a whole signature into this one I mean it's, I say a whole signature it's not very many pages but I added like a little miniature signature in you'll see in the background there's some fabric and book page back there just kind of a layered cool look um and then this signature, I just kind of wrapped it with a vintage handkerchief. Where's the other side? Here it is. And I sewed it in. And so the strings I used in the center and put some beautiful beads on. The other ones do not have beads because I didn't add a signature to the other ones. Um, so this one does have a little signature with an old hanky. And here's the pages of that. Can you see, am I even in frame? There's a fabric tag there. Some leaf trim there. Again, all of these pages, consider this as your base. Start adding to it if you so desire or write on them. Again, I'm sure for most of you, you're sitting there thinking that's what I do anyway with a journal. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Um, in my mind, though, I, I was creating a base book like I had done with this one. And so that's where my thought process was going with it. But it can just be used in itself as a junk journal. It's just a little bit of napkin decoupage stone with some of that, uh, one of those rosettes on it. And some trim there. A little metal tab. I think each of these, I think, has two of these in them, I believe. A little ticket stub. It's hard to do any of them identical because they kind of develop their own personality. This is an old receipt from 1957. And I just, again, attached that with a paper clip because that might be something you want to fold and then create a, a pullout onto a page. And then this one has a tassel hanging off the bottom. Some vintage trim. This is one of those, um, my mind's gone blank, I was about to say interpretation cards. It's one of the um, translation cards, I believe it's French, where it translates a foreign word, and I believe it's French to English. And then the Viewmaster Pocket, I just kind of hinged it onto this piece of fabric here, like that. And I put some of the watercolor paper with lines on it there. And then on this last paper page, I attached a piece of, um, to me it feels like some kind of sweater trim, but it's some type of trim, and then I just tucked some of the watercolor paper, lined paper in there, like that, and then on the back side, I hinged a index card, I just hinged it like that, and again, if this, if, if you're going for that look, I would then put a flip here as well, so that that flips up and then there's something that flips to the side. Uh, that's what I would do. And then on the other side of that fabric and then the leather. And again, all of this is just kind of wonk wonky stitched like that. And I made all of these long enough so that it can expand out as fat as you want it to and still tie. Um, but I also done it this way so that if you wanted to snip this off and cut it off and add um, like a lace trim 
or sorry silk or you know, whatever you wanted to add, um, you could do that. Now, for me, if I were keeping this, I can tell you now, I would probably snip this and add like a piece of cord like that. I would tie them together and just have it look um, that much messier, I guess. <laughs> I like that look. So like I would attach a piece of this cord and tie them together and create just a really pieced together kind of tie. I would like that look. Um, but that's that one. So this is flower. And there's the key. And next I'll do the Eiffel Tower. So you can see it has the key on it as well and the rusty bit down here on the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of flip. Um, there's the Eiffel Tower little cluster. This one also has the sliding key where it slides with the rusty bolt on the bottom. And I did that by putting paper and some of the stitch muslin that my friend Dee had done. Here's a piece of the scrapbook paper, the feather pocket, the little Rolodex card with a ticket and a cloth tab. Oh, this is some um, like yarn that I got at an estate sale a long time ago, back before the pandemic. Um, I had went to an estate sale and there was this big spool of this um, mustard yellow um, yarn and it's so pretty. I, I love this big old spool. It's just a big fat spool of mustard yellow yarn. Love it. A vintage stamp there. A sweater tab. I've forgotten what a lot of these have in them because, oh look, so this is one where I did the flip to where it kind of does like that. So this flips this way and then this flips this way like that and that's the base page. I mean, you could even still add in another flip there if you wanted to. That's the whole thing is you just keep adding until you don't want to add any more. And I use like fabric and washi tape. It's kind of stiff because I also glued the washi tape and I kind of folded this page like that. So it's kind of stiff and it'll loosen up over time, I'm sure. But what I was saying is this morning when I was doing the flip through, there was some of the stuff I had just literally forgotten about because... It had been so long since I had worked on these up until several days ago. I switched over and did that eclectic dreaming journal. And then I did something I do not normally do. I accepted a custom order, which the lady already knows all of this. I've actually spoken to her. Oh, that I don't normally do custom orders. I'm weird about that because um, I like to do journals just the way I like I mean I just I make what I make and I I like to make something that's calling out to me in that moment and the way I want to make it and I hope that people like it and um you know and then I can post it for sale if somebody likes it they buy it if they you know if they don't they they don't have to I don't like to do custom orders because you know what if you make it and the person doesn't like it or it wasn't what they visualized I, I just it worries me but she was just so um you know, confident that she would like anything that I made, and uh, I appreciate that, but oh, it was so hard. I just struggle with that, because to me, when when I sell a journal, I mean, you just want to know it's going to somebody that wants it and likes it, and um, you want to know that they're happy. That's what matters to me, and she says she is, so I'm thrilled that she is. It's just that she gave me um, artistic freedom to do whatever I wanted within a color range. And the colors were not colors that I typically use. And I thought it would be a fun challenge. And I mean, it was fun, but it just wasn't, I think this one's empty. I don't feel any paper in that one. It's still sealed. Um, it was fun. I really enjoyed doing it. It's just that it was outside of my comfort zone. I also do not like to sell something before I make it because I would rather the person, you know, see it, stumble across it and want it and purchase it than to, you know, special order something. So I struggled with that and I shipped it out and I sent her all kind of pictures and she says she loves it. So hopefully she will and 
I am relieved to have it done. So when I finished that, I started back on these and just finished them. So that was Eiffel Tower. I ran my mouth through that entire flip through, but it was basically the same type of concepts as the first one. So this is the Victorian lady. The key is kind of hanging that way. So you can do it like that. And it has that same fabric, the messy stitching. Hold it up so you can see the cluster. It's very hard to see on camera, I know. And then this one I stitched down the twine. Um, it has like some kind of a rusty nut or bolt or whatever in the key. And it's stitched down so it doesn't slide up and down. The feather in the tag. And this one has kind of a yellowing, yellow and white stripe. Oh, I'm not in frame. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't let me mess up this video. I'm not starting over. My, dog, my daughter's voice is just going to go out on camera if, if I mess up. Um, okay, vintage stamp. This is a flip bear with one of the metal tabs up there. A ticket, a little flag, and a rosette. All of these needs flips or pictures or something. A Rolodex card, a piece of eyelet, some of the leaf trim, another rosette, a score pad with a scribbles in time paper tab. This is some vintage crocheted trim. Um, another postcard. And I just had to put this piece of trim here, uh, this piece of um, material here as a tab because I just thought it looked so pretty with that postcard. Love that. And yeah, loved it. <laughs> pretty birds. And I used a little red metal tab there because of that. And look, that was accidental. But look at the little bit of yellow on, on the breast of the bird. And the little yellow flowers, does that even show up on camera? Let me see. Hopefully that shows up. If y'all hear some weird noises in the background, my little doggy is at my feet asleep and he is snoring. He snores like a pug. He's a little Yorkie, but he snores like a pug. He is a very loud snoring dog. This is some beautiful ribbon that has um, script. I guess it's stamped on there. I don't even remember where I got this. I think it may have, I, I don't remember where I got that, to be honest. A flip up there. And then, um, that is almost it with this one. So, speaking of custom orders, I am doing a fun swap. Um, this really isn't a custom order per se, but... It's a fun swap, um, so I'll give all the details when I do the video, but this will be my first time doing something like this. So this lady that owns a shop, amazing shop, and y'all be excited when you hear the name because most of you probably are followers or followers of her. She's got a um, cool little shop, but um, she reached out to do a swap, and so she liked one of my journals that I've already made, so I'm not having to do with pressure of making something, <laughs> hoping that she would like it. She picked out one that I've already made, and um, I'm sending it to her, and she is sending a bunch of um, items from her shop, and I'm going to use those items and create a journal specifically, you know, mainly from the items that she sends, so that's kind of exciting. That's something different that I haven't done before, so um, I'm excited to do that. I've been trying to kind of look through her shop and pick out a theme um, of, of what type of journal and I'm leaning towards, I don't know yet. Um, she has some items that would probably make a, a cool cookbook. Um, 
so that was vintage I mean Victorian lady and then this is birds the same key the doily um, but yeah she has a lot of vintage stuff though so I'm torn between maybe trying to do a cookbook or a um uh, I found a beautiful owl um, that I'm thinking about doing a journal on. So I was thinking about just doing a basic vintage theme and getting some of her vintage items and doing that. Uh, oh, this is the upholstery fabric that I was saying that the bird one is, is made with a different fabric here on the front. Oh, I'm so out of frame. Oh my goodness, y'all. I hope this video works. I'm not going to refilm. Um... The key, I stitched down this one so the key does not slide. The rusty piece and the key are fixed. And that's just the piece of paper there. The little um, tuck spot with the feather. And the this one has the twine on it. The old vintage stamp. Book paper on the back. The... Um, flag tab and the paper tab, a ticket, the envelope, try to hold that up to the light. Yeah, I think this one has like a little thin piece of paper in it. Some of that vintage crocheted trim. The Rolodex card with the little tab on the top. And one of those translation cards. I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me. If you're still hanging in listening to me ramble, I'm telling you this has not been a typical video situation for me. It's so hard when this kind of thing happens. I, I just feel like I'm repeating the same thing, and then I'm thinking, did I say that on the last video or on this video? Ugh. A metal tab. On the red bird. It's called a scarlet... My friend Pam would know exactly what that is. Scarlet tan Tanager. Tanager. Oh, I wish I had the knowledge she has on birds, but I'm sure she's worked hard to get that knowledge, studying up on them, researching them. This still has a little bit of the um, wax thread there. I don't know that it's long enough to attach any beads to. You could certainly tie another little piece to that and then attach beads if you wanted to, to have that, that um, visual hanging out of the bottom. You add whatever you want. Again, that's the little pom-poms there. That's the beauty of this kind of craft is that there are no rules. There's nobody to say you can or can't do something. You just do what you want. Like that right there. I just took a piece of that twine and wrapped the corner around it and did that just to add a visual interest has a little fabric tag and then real pretty washi tape and it just flips out like that and then on this side that flips out and it has the rosette on it and this has a tassel another one of the vintage receipts the cigar band the viewmaster pocket with the watercolor lined paper and then the back has that sweater trim with the watercolor lined paper the index card with the washi tape and again just like with the other one I would then put a flip under here or flip going this way or even attach a little small signature there and then this is the other side of the upholstery fabric and then the leather Y'all, that completes the final flip through. Did we actually make it? Um, thanks for hanging in here with me, if you did. <laughs> and um, I hope I didn't ramble too much. I, uh, I feel like I was talking like Eeyore the whole time. Like, oh, hum, hum. Um, <laughs> I really am excited about these. It's just this was my third time filming. How discouraging is that? Um, anyway, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up below, and um, I hope everyone's safe and healthy. I, I do think about so many people through this, and um, anyway, we won't get into that. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks so much for hanging in there. If you're interested in one of these books, 
please let me know below. I might end up posting them in Etsy, but I don't think so. And um, if you have questions about any of them, let me know. And y'all have a blessed day.